Ellen McCauley at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York on June 1st, or as Bob refers to it, the beginning of my birthday month. <laughs> so um, I love this article, what's talking about a fear of joy. And we think, do I have a fear of joy? You know, and I think many of us do. On Tuesday night, I had a very busy day at work. And I came home kind of late, and we said, I said, why don't we just watch the news? I am telling you, I do want to discuss some of the things that were on the news. I got so upset that I couldn't fall asleep that night. I was thinking about this and that and this and that. And I said to Bob, I need to take perhaps a one month break. I did that for a while, a little while, like during the pandemic. I said, I can't do it anymore. It was so upsetting locally, in the United States, the world. And also, I think someone mentioned it, maybe it was um, <clears throat> Rollin in his, in his um, presentation. We have to deal with the reasons behind why we overeat. And I think there's reasons behind why we fear joy, because there's always something going on, isn't there? We're always yeah. waiting for that other <coughs> shoe to drop. I am an adult child of an alcoholic, and we were always, is dad going to come home on Friday, or is he going to take his paycheck and go out and get drunk? And then my mother would have to try and pay the bills, and she'd be worried, is he coming, is he coming, he's going to be home. And that anxiety, you feed off it. Well, let's have a bowl of ice cream while we're worried about dad coming home. And even though I'm 68 years old, so many of our learned behaviors are, and I even said to someone, they go, why are you working so hard? Your last day's next Wednesday. You should be coasting, baby. I go, I have to work so hard because I don't want my legacy. I don't want people to say, Ellen left this undone. And he said, you could murder someone right about now. <laughs> and your legacy would be just fine, you know? We do it to ourselves. We, we put so much pressure on our, nobody's at work going, you will do this before you go, nobody. <laughs> I'm doing it to myself. We are afraid, and there's an old saying, it says, Pope Francis said it, when someone gets burned by boiling milk, he cries when he sees the cow. You know, is that us? Are we then to the point where when there is a little joy, like, you know, I'm in the pool with my family and I'm, I'm thinking, this is it, this is the peace. And then I think, oh, this one's getting kind of old. I hope, how many years does this one have? And how many, you got to live in the present joy, not worry about what's going to happen down the road. And I have a problem with that. And I think those of us who overeat have a problem with that. We're not living fully in the present. The eternal now. I love that. The eternal now. And Rent is one of my favorite musicals of all time because of the song that says, there's only this, there's only now, no time for regret. I love that song. And that is what, what I think the cure to just about everything is, living in the present. Living in the present. And one of the things is my goal and people say, well, what do you want to do when you retire? I go, I want to live in the present. I want to have peace. I want to get joy. Yeah, I want to be organized. Yeah, I want the uh, new windows on the house, yada, yada, yada. But peace and joy are number one. And I'm going to go right now, right over to making, no, I think, a decision tree. So many people the other, the other day said to me, after we were talking about change, they say, I just can't wrap my head around the change. I just feel like I'm afraid. I don't want to do it. And I always did this in sales. Sales, you learn to sit down with your client. When you're, I mean, I love sales. I think it's a noble profession. And you would say, let's say you're selling the pen. Okay. Well, you're already using that pen. What do you like about the pen you're currently using? I would do this. All right, and, and there, is there any cost to, to making a change and not using that same pen? And what about if you didn't change? What might happen? Oh, run out of ink, whatever. I'm just using that as an example. But let's take uh, an example of losing 10 pounds. 
What, and you can yell it out. What is the benefit of losing 10 pounds? Better health. Health. Give me another one. Clothes look better. You look Clothes. better. Look better. Clothes, health, look better. Nothing else? Fitness. Fitness. Movement. I think it's a psychological victory. You feel better about yourself. You feel empowered. I'm doing this. And it helps you in other areas of your life. If you can do this, you can maybe do this or do that. It empowers you to say, I didn't fail at this. Okay, what is a negative about losing 10 pounds? It's hard. Well, it's hard. That's a good one. You have to deprive yourself of something you might like. Deprive, deprivation. Buy new clothes. Yeah. Buy new clothes, maybe you want to wear your, uh, you know, size, you know, whatever. Buy new clothes. What else? You might lose something you like. You have a dress that you like, but you lose ten pounds. It doesn't fit anymore. All right, uh, clothes don't fit that you like. I like those dresses because then it makes you look even you're like billowing in it. You know? <laughs> All, right. All right. So what will happen to you if you do not lose ten pounds? Let's say not changing. What are the pros of not losing 10 pounds? Don't gain 20. <laughs> yeah, you might not gain 20. Okay. Enjoy McDonald's food. Uh, you can enjoy McDonald's. Okay, there's another one. A, a pro of not changing could be that, I don't know, I, I have a hard time with this one. Well, uh, things they stay the same. Things stay the way you're used to. All right, they stay the same, and there's a certain kind of je ne sais quoi. There's a certain kind of things aren't changing. My, my world's not in an upheaval. It's just going along the same as it was. Okay, and then what is the cost <coughs> of not changing? And I think this is where you could get perhaps high blood pressure. Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah, maybe yeah, not yeah. just 10 pounds, but 10 could lead to 20, could lead to 30. Adult onset diabetes. It's not getting better from whatever problem you have. Right, and I always get, take it back to, like there was a few pictures taken of me today and I wanted to take one of those clown mirrors and stretch <laughs> myself out a little bit like this. And I know when I put on weight. I know, and I don't like it. So I think it's a, one of the pros to me is I want to feel, and not, when I say good about myself, it's not like I want to say, hey, I've lost weight and I'm Gina Lola Bridget. No, it's more like I want to feel like I'm doing the right things for me. So I think it's a psychological victory state. So not just with losing weight, but we did this when we were tired. Bob and I sat right down and I did one of these decisional balance worksheets. We wrote down how much money we had now, how much money we'd get if we were tired, what we don't have to pay for retiring, what we could do when we were tired. When I was done with that decisional balance worksheet, how did you feel, Bob? I felt really good about you it. felt really good about it. He, he's like, oh, we can do this. But without putting it down, sometimes making a change, and you know, boy, don't we always say tomorrow, 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 I'll do it Monday. So this is one, I want people to really take a look at this. And you don't really need this sheet. You just need, but I, I like writing things down. You can just use a blank sheet of paper. I'm gonna stop right there, Bob.